Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, and this week I am, of course, able to secure the very hard to reach Duran Frazier from the dot is it landhub.com or the landhub.com? Come on, dude. I would never, ever buy a domain like land the landhub.com. Landhub.com, reserveland.com. Duran, living the life, the dream off the beach. Carlsbad, how are you? I'm doing excellent. Thanks for asking, Mark. How about yourself? Pulse is still normal. Respiration is fine. Uh, I'm starting. You know what? I'm starting to drink these uh, these these uh, mid afternoon coffees. What do you think of that? I just had one myself. Did you? Do you feel good? I do. I shouldn't be drinking any coffee at all. In fact, my friend at lunch re- just he kind of made me realize that why would I ever want to drink coffee when I have more energy than um, than the Energizer Bunny? The only reason I'm drinking coffee right now is to get through this podcast. Otherwise, I'd be meditating. This is oh. this is my meditation time. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm water's my, my thing. It's good. That's good. Yeah. Look at you drinking the smart water. Doesn't help me, obviously. Hmm. Well, let's, that's debatable. So speaking of smart, we're going to talk about how Duran is so smart and is able to buy land and then make that land into something more valuable, right? So l- let's give an example. Duran buys 640 acres in Nevada. That land I might just cut up into 40 acres and sell, not Duran. Duran says, hey, let's call the local, uh, you know, solar companies and see if we can make it a solar farm. I know. Why don't we see if we can mine it? I know. Why don't we see if we can get a geothermal company out here? So he creates these projects on his land that, Potentially, instead of me making, let's say, hundreds of thousands of dollars on the property, he makes potentially millions of dollars. That's that's the key term is uh, potentially. Potentially. Um, so what's going on with you? What, you know, how do you do these deals? How do you find these deals? What makes you say, yeah, I can make a million dollars here? Well, let's let's start off, Mark, by saying that the, the reason why you and I got in business together was because... We sort of, uh, as a uh, collective group, thought outside the box. Um, we were, we were obviously when everybody was was buying, uh, you know, tax auction property. You and I decided let's take it a step further and actually cut this land up ourselves, which people thought we were absurd and crazy. And I mean, the idea was uh, didn't seem to have much merit until we actually did a little research and found out that it didn't cost a whole lot of money to subdivide the land. So Mark and our Mark and I decided to start small. We took down our first uh, twenty, what twenty five hundred acres together, Mark. Yeah, we did. We did a, t- a test takedown to see how it would go. So we took down our first twenty five hundred acres. I don't know if it was twenty five hundred each. Uh, we negotiated a great deal, and uh, and it, it, the market started picking up. It was a good time for us. You know, we we got into the market when when it was you know our our um, our ROI was pretty good, but it wasn't anything spectacular. And then as we sort of got into our massive purchase, the market just took off. So, and that happened, I mean, literally it, the timing was perfect, but at the same time, we were sort of always in our brains going, okay, how we have to stay a step ahead of the game. And so we bought what we thought were the best parcels, uh, which we, I mean, to this day, I still believe we, we, we took down some of the best properties in this large portfolio of land. Right. Well, you know, we, you know, we, we were smart, you know what I mean? Because we went to the local expert, our surveyor, yeah. and he handpicked our sections. Correct. Versus just looking, you know, going out there with the seller or, you know, a broker that may not have had our best interest, not know the area as well as our surveyor did. Correct. Correct. And so, you know, you and I obviously, we we took down, I think it was right around 40,000 acres together. And, uh, and then a second acquisition that I made of another 10,000 acres, um, without you, uh, which is about a year and a half later. And, um, and my second acquisition was very interesting because my second acquisition happened to be when I, when I looked at a map and I looked at what was what was around. I I generally want to see. I mean, you know, it's it's not hard 
uh, you know, to take uh, to take down land that you think has residential, you know, development uh, potential in the near future. And in this area, I knew there was a lot of mining going on, and never did I really think my property would be mineable, if that's even a word. But um, but I did I did think of potential alternative energy. I knew there was a couple of projects in the area. There's a geothermal plant to the north. Right. Uh, and, it was a, and there was a couple of geothermal wells that were drilled um, in uh, the town of Crescent Valley. So I literally bought, you know, 5,000 acres in this little town of Crescent Valley, uh, most of the private land. Um, and, and it was, you know, just on the, I would say on the south, uh, southwestern portion of the valley, which is pretty much in town and off, off the highway. And, uh, and so the idea was to go out and, and sort of, you know, see what was there and see what I could potentially, uh, you know, how I could make this property um, take it to its highest and best use. So what I did is I went and researched what from mining to solar to geothermal. And I sat on some stuff for a while, didn't make any big moves. And then we went to solar first, which it, we still have a nice project down there, which we're actually working on a deal as we speak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so what's going on with that deal? Uh, how long, how long have you been working that deal and, and what phase is it in right now? Okay. So the solar, the solar one's very, are you talking about the solar one? The solar one, not, not the mining one. Okay, so the solar one, we we've been in and out of a couple of option deals for the past four, about I would say three or four years. And the, the hardest thing with solar is it's it the, the entire project hinges on whether or not you can obtain what's called a power purchase agreement or a PPA. And in solar, that that's basically your golden ticket. The minute you have a PPA, which is a deal with the energy company to buy energy at a certain price, right. everything yeah. else everything else sort of a moot point because. It's sort of a, a percentage game, right? If the numbers on paper make sense, you know, you're going to have someone buy the project. Right. Well, you know, and, what, what's interesting about that, let me just, you know, jump in here, is you had no energy, you have no energy background, correct? None. None. So none. how did you even, you know, learn about this stuff? Like, it's like you don't know what you don't know. Who filled in that that gap for you? Did you hire a consultant or what did you do? You know, it's actually really interesting. I, I did, a, I mean... I do a lot of research. I'm a, I, for me, if I don't know about something, I want to learn about it. So I'll spend time. I'll set up meetings with people. I'll, you know, I'll find a mentor in every in every different industry possible, just so I can learn. Um, so if if there's somebody I feel like that can help me um, better understand what I'm trying to accomplish, I'll go meet with them. Um, and we've talked about it. You know, we've had a couple of podcasts where we talked about getting getting through to somebody. But I mean, most of these guys weren't people that would say no. Um, you know, they were, uh, most of them were pretty nice people that would sit down with you and chat for 30 minutes because they felt like it was potential they could work with you on the project. Right. So I would bring this project to a handful of people and I would just pick their brains and talk to them. And, and then we had a couple of guys make offers to us on the property to help us. And I'd take that information and I'd sort of absorb it and understand it. And then I, the next time I had a conversation with, and funny enough, last week I had a, a company and well, two weeks ago I had a company call me. A, a, a very large private equity firm, and they wanted to. Bu they want this this particular parcel of land for a solar project. And I think he was so baffled by our conversation because he didn't realize how much I knew about solar. <laughs> and and he was, I think he was just totally puzzled. He was like, "Holy crap! Like, why aren't you doing solar?" And I told him, "Look, I got a full plate. I work on a lot of projects. This stuff's very intriguing. They're big. It's a big project. I don't have a liaison with the power company, so it's just something that I can't do right now." But you know, he, he it, having that, being able to talk the talk with a guy who's in the business makes the deal work a lot better, right? Because he understands that I know what I'm talking about, and I'm not. He, he's not going to pull the wool over my eyes, right? So, so that deal sort of as it's evolving right now is, and and it sounds like it. You know, we're we're two two and a half weeks into putting this option together. They want the property, and and he understands that there's a lot of risk on my end to tie up the property for two years. So they have to come up with a lot of money up front in order. All right, for us well, let, let's slow down for our newbies. Who don't know what an option is? Okay, right. So, do you want to explain what the sure. what the option means? Sure. So, so basically, an option, and Mark and I have discussed this in the past. An option is simply um, you have a a particular time and date to exercise an option. So, you put together an option agreement where I I have you know three years. I'm going to give you a a thousand dollars down, and I have three years to execute at a you know at a said price of let's say let's just say a hundred thousand dollars. As an example, so I have three years. So any point in time in that three years, I have I I can I can exercise my option by the land. So and you can structure an option any way you want. And one of the ideas that Mark and I have given uh, listeners in the past is to go go put an option on a piece of land that you think is going to sell for a higher price than you can pay for it. So you give them a hundred dollars for sixty days, quote unquote, for your due diligence. But what you're actually doing is actually marketing the land to a potential buyer. 
Right. And, that, and um, that's how you can lock down property with almost nothing. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's like, it's like, you know, creating money. Basically. Exactly. Exactly. So, exactly. So, so, uh, so what we're doing with these guys with the solar project is structuring an option agreement where they're going to come up with money and, and every option looks different. In this case, there's an option with a lease on it, a monthly lease payment, um, uh, up to, uh, which you can either convert into, uh, you know, the actual note itself or, um, or it's just a, a lease payment. And, uh, and then you, they have the opportunity of exercising their option. You can structure an option with, in, in this case, you can structure an option with work commitments, meaning they have to spend a certain amount of money every year on the project until they exercise that option. And if not, they owe that money to you. So it's called a, and you can call it different things, but we call, I'd call it work commitment work in the commitment. option. Okay. So if that makes sense. So like in a, in a mining world, a work commitment is basically taking uh, 20, let's just say, you know, uh, three years of, a, of an option and t- the first year is 25,000 uh, worth of work on the property. The second year is 50,000. Third year would be a hundred grand. Fourth year, if you, you extend it out, maybe 500 grand. The next year be a million. So you structure these work commitments and these are the kind of things that mining companies will do so that it, you don't, you're not just tying the property up and doing nothing with it. I see. I see. So you lock down the property and then you evaluate the highest and best use. So Correct. You'll say, okay, the highest and best use for this property might be solar. It might be a mining project. It might be a quick flip. It might be going vertical, correct? Building. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. how do you go about determining that? Um, well, I think, first of all, you got to allow your mind to be super creative, right? You got you to think, what are my options? There's no, there's no set structure or, or, or line items that you're going to go through and go, okay. I mean, you could, you could set up. You go, okay, is, you know, is there oil? Do I have oil rights? You know, what's the area look like for oil? Is there solar potential? What does the area look like for solar? I mean, if you're in, if you're in Canada in the snow on top of a, you know, 10,000 foot peak that has a, you know, that has a 90 degree drop on it, you're probably not going to do solar. Um, so there's certain things that you can instantly probably count out, right? Um, if there's no gold in the area or any mining, you're probably not going to look at mining. Um, is there residential growth moving your direction? Potentially, yes. So you look at it, you assess it. What's the potential? Is this property something I want to sell? If you, now, remember, you can do an option on a piece of land for, let's just say, 90 days. And then you could take an entire marketing piece and build it around a certain idea. So in this case, let's say that they're built, let's say there's infrastructure moving in that direction. You could build it around what the infrastructure is, what all the infrastructure that's coming into that town and say, look, this property is this far away. Here's Google Maps. Here's the arrows. And all this cost you was a hundred bucks. And you could sell this property for 25, 30 grand. Maybe the property costs a grand. You can sell it for 25, 30 based on what you just sold as a marketing piece to your buyer. Right, right. And that, and that happens all the time, especially if you can have comps to back it up. So you look at the last three to five sales in that area and you say, look, that sold for 20, that sold for 15, that sold for 18, that sold for 30. We're going to price it, you know, at 19.5. And there you go. Now you've got your, your property and your sale and you've put a hundred bucks in, it's a pretty good payday. It's a pretty good profit when you, when you can do it like that. So, you know, that's interesting, but you don't go out and hire a third party consultant to help you evaluate highest and best use. Even if it's an area you've never bought in. Well, correct. I mean, those consultants aren't cheap, right? So I might, you have to be your own consultant, right? And if that, if that means educating yourself a bit, then you educate yourself. Right. Uh, and, and you're not going to know, you're, you're, you know, you're not going to figure out every opportunity. And for me, I'm sort of my own consultant, right? I look at a property and, you know, going back and we'll talk a little bit about that mining project, but um, that mining project, you know, we sat in this land. I knew there was mining potential for many years and yet I didn't, I didn't make any moves because I knew that in order for that move to be made, somebody had to come to me first. And that's exactly what happened. We had a gentleman come to come come to me and ask me wanted to buy the property, so I gave him a price tag on the property. And so I can't. He can't. He said I can't afford it. I said we can structure something creative. He said I just I don't have the money right now. I said okay. So he goes. So I don't hear from the guy for two months, and he goes, Hey, I want to buy the property. I said here's the price. You know, I already told you what it was. He goes, well, I can't afford. It. I said, well, well, if you don't mind, what are you doing? He goes, Oh, we're gold miners. And I huh. said, Well, your price is going to ten x. And of course, if you couldn't pay, you know, what I, what I originally quoted him, it certainly wasn't going to be able to pay 10X on it. And, uh, and so I basically just turned the deal around and we created a joint venture between us and, and which in turn, 
Um, I'm sort of I've, I've, I'm a, have a managing role in the business, and we're proceeding with uh, what what looks to be a very a very good project. And um, again, you know, one of the interesting things about gold is we've spent we have we do have we have geologists, we have consult we have we have hired a lot of people now, right? Because now we know there's something there. Right, um, right. And how did now? How did you finance that part? Uh, we have partners that we've all we've all had capital calls to to kind of fund the project. We haven't. They would. We just did a recent recently. Two of the partners pulled in a raise. They sold their own shares. Okay. Uh, but I I'm still able to fund the project on my own. Um. So we're 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 funding our our end of it ourselves. But eventually we'll come into look. In fact, I have some meetings coming up here in the next couple of days with some very big investors that want to get involved. I'm not super excited about bringing an investor in because I believe that we're about three months away from a potential uh, sale. So right. of the, the project. So it's one of those things where once you get to a certain point, then you go out and you sort of, the creativity's put this part together. Now it's the, the next level of creativity is finding the capital, the next moves, how do we grow this project? Like anything, right? If you, if you see that there's potential infrastructure and you want to build a multifamily, you know, apartment complex because they're mining for oil and all of a sudden they hit a big, you know, they hit a, they, they hit a big well. You, you want to figure out how to get that done. So you've got to go do some legwork yourself. And then you want to bring the intelligent people around you that understand that stuff better than you do with you on, uh, you know, on that journey, because that's the way to solve the problem. Like for me, I have no mining background whatsoever, but I'm a business guy. So right. you, show, you show me numbers or the potential of numbers and I can go find more money. Um, right. Yeah. You know, you know, that's an interesting point because one of my biggest pet peeves when I'm talking to, uh, coaching students or, uh, you know, potential prospective coaching students, whomever it may be, they always bring up, you know, cash is tight or I can't afford it right now. You know, I cannot stand that as an excuse for not doing something, right? Because don't you, the, the real value is finding the deal. You'll always be able to find the money. You'll always be able to find the money. You find property pennies on the dollar. That's the real value, right? Correct. Now, now here, let, let's just get one thing straight too: is that if if you are you know doing Mark's program and you're there to get rich quick and and people don't trust you and you've never been able to be trusted at some level because you, maybe you're a bad businessman or or woman and you've made some made some done some bad things in the past, that's your own fault, right? Like I can't if you can't go raise money because people don't trust you, that's not something we can help you with. But if you if you're just risk averse and you don't want to go out there and do it, then that's your problem because you need, you can solve that problem. Yeah, right. That risk, yeah, exactly. Risk aversion is what you know. If if you've got a bad track record, I don't know what to tell you. We can't help you. <laughs> yeah, we can't. We can't help you there if you just. We we can't solve. We we can't we can't we can't get your uh, credit up to eight hundred uh, credit score, but we'll we can certainly give you ideas and. You, you know what it is though. You don't even have good credit. Credit isn't an, an issue anymore. You know what it is? it's about character. Exactly. Character. That that we can't help you with. You either have character or you don't, really. Yeah, like Mark's, Mark's, Mark's character score is about a 720, and I'm, an, <laughs> and I'm an 850. You're an 850 <laughs> character score? And I'm a 720? We should actually create that. Uh, a character score. We should, yeah, we should create a character score. That'd be awesome. I'll tell so, you what, for, for information marketing, that'd be a huge thing. Because, you know, a lot of these gurus, nobody trusts them. Nobody. And, and for, and for good reason, right? Because, you know, I mean, Mark, Mark's trying to sell something of value and, and giving so much away for free. And then there's so many guys out there that only have one thing in mind. And that's, that's what is their revenue? What's their bottom line? They just want to make money. It's a system. And, uh, and it, unfortunately it's a trap for a lot of people, but, uh, just like, I think, uh, you know, I just, I listen lately and between pharmaceuticals and college degrees and all the online schools, it scares me. Um, they, they want everyone to be PhDs, I think. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And, uh, yeah, you know, I just did a, uh, a coffee talk about how today, you know, being good isn't even good enough anymore. You've got to be outstanding today yeah. with, with everything because consumers have become so smart, right? And it's, it's like the most outstanding take all the chips, right? Yeah. There's, there's no, you know, you get some, you get some reward here and you get some reward there. It's like Tesla took everything. Fisker is just gone now. You know, yeah. iPhone and Android are taking everything. There's no, there's no room for BlackBerry, right? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's funny, crazy. Funny you that, it's funny you say that. I just, I was thinking about, I saw a commercial last night for iPad. I was like, what if iPad wasn't here? What else would exist? 
right? Like, what else would we use? Like, the only reason we use iPad is because we're forced to use iPad, meaning like it's marketed to us and shoved down our throat every day, um, you know, and Apple's and peace and, you know, Microsoft, like, what if Microsoft, what if Windows wasn't there? Um, and I always think about like, would there be more creativity or less? So right. uh, it's, just, it's just an interesting thought, you know, looking at how, how this behemoth of, of Apple has created these iPad tablets. I mean, we have, look, there's a lot of darn good tablets out there. And iPad, I don't think iPad's the best um, for tablets, yet they're the most expensive and everybody still buys them. So Right, right. And, and in fact, that's going to be one of my tips of the day, too, is uh, an iPad app uh, for, for, for your land, which I downloaded and wanted to save. I can't wait. I, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting really excited to hear it now. Yeah, you know what? I say that. Now I don't even know where I put it. <laughs> okay, no, no, I found it. Okay, good. All right, good. So, all right, well, getting back to your projects. Yeah. So you've got solar going on right now. Mm -hmm. You've got mining, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm new to this game, where do you think it's going to be? So I love the, the Wayne Gretzky quote. Don't skate to where the puck is. Skate to where the puck's going to be. Where, right. What's the next big thing? And don't tell me it's the shale fields in North Dakota. That's done. What's you know, what's what's the next big innovative land play? Are, is it is it going to be alternative energy, or is you know, I mean, look, there's a lot of companies out there that they're just not getting enough traction. It's just you know, so solar panels just aren't cheap enough right now. Yeah, you know, it's it's that's a tough one, Mark. I you know, is it is it wind? It could be well, wind. No, I don't. You know, here's there's a couple of things. Number one is when when changes. I think ecosystems at some level, like kills birds kills i think there's a lot of there's starting to be and I, I know it's still a big deal uh and wind is still very attractive but i think the problem is is that is that we're now getting into a point where we're killing certain species so all these little things that are which i don't agree with i think it's silly but i understand where, where some of these environmentalists come from but but i don't agree with them um but what's interesting is you look at, you look at uh, uh solar and wind and and think about how much value is in that right uh, other than the fact that it's an eyesore for wind, there's so much value in having alternative energy. But here's the other problem is we're so focused on oil and we've been so focused on oil. And the only way we'll ever not focus on oil is the day that Rockefeller or the Rockefeller family is is wiped out, which that won't happen. So the fact of the matter is all these things sound really cool and we need to move that direction, alternative energy. But at the end of the day, we still have an oil focus, which is why we drive cars that still only get 25 to 30 miles a gallon and and we still push it down Americans' throats because that's a money maker. Solar is free energy, basically. And I'm saying, obviously, it costs a lot of money to, to create the project, but it comes from the sun, and the sun right. is free. So I believe, and the same thing goes with wind. Um, so I just think that there's not going to be a big push toward, toward alternative energy. In fact, I kind of believe what we've already had a boom and a bust. Um, we may be kind of going back. At that To me, that hockey stick went all the way to the bottom, and maybe it's starting to come up again a little bit. But after all the, all the scams that went through with Obama's green energy plan, I think a lot of these things have sort of subsided. Um, and a lot of the big visionary plans for alternative energy have faded a bit. But right, right. I, one thing I do believe we're on the upswing of is potentially is mining. Um, and when I say that, I believe that, you know, you, 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 you talk about the old, um, you, you know, like our grandfathers, like my grandfather, he was a, he was a gemstone guy. He loved gemstones and turquoise and sapphires. And he always had these cool little things. I was like, those aren't cool. Like, you know, those were like, those were like 40 years ago. Right. But I think that all that, that sort of mining, I think as we sort of find, find that all we're doing is putting ourselves into further and further debt, you look at things like Bitcoin. Have you seen Bitcoin, Mark? I, I, I love the Bitcoin concept. It scares me. Yes. But I love the concept. So, and if you haven't had a chance to research Bitcoin, just look at it. It's very interesting. Um, it's a total different dynamic than, than, than our fiat currency. But I just think that mining for different, you know, whether it's what com commodities, um, you know, there's like in, in Nevada, there's silver, there's gold. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. I, I can't even name 10 of them. And it's a bit, it's starting to be a very popular direction for people that own land to at least research. Right. So, right. So, you know, my, my advice would be if you're, if you're investing in land now, Take a two-pronged approach, right? Number one, you know, do it our way, which would be buying it pennies on the dollar, right? So you're going to yeah. focus on 
on sellers that don't want their property anymore. They're advertising the world they don't want their property. And if you need to learn how to create that deal flow, you know, go to you know thelandgeek.com and sign up and get the investors toolkit. We'll teach you how to do that. But the other approach is going to be okay, research it where you know, start getting in meetings with people that want to do these big projects, whether it be in mining or energy, and start exploring. Can I get a, a speculative play out of this property? That is, if I pay for you know this amount, can I flip it to someone that would want to speculate that in the future, this could be a great energy play and I can make 10x, 20x, 30x on that piece of property. Does exactly. that make sense? Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's that's the way to go. So, getting back to uh, tip of the week. So, I found a iPhone app, which I thought would be really helpful. And it is, I'm going to my iPhone now. It's called Topo Maps. So, you have this uh, app and it's it's really nice looking. And when you're out looking at property, uh, it'll give you the coordinates of that property and then create the topographic map for you. And what's neat about this is that when you're marketing your property, it really helps to show a buyer the topographic map. And so uh, that's going to be one of my tips of the week is uh, this site called Topo Map. Um, I'm looking at it right now. It looks pretty cool. And then uh, there's another site that I found as we uh, talk about maps. I'm going to go to the site now. It's itouchmap.com. itouchmap.com. And if we go here, let's take a look. Duran, have you heard of itouchmap.com? I have not, Mark. Go go check it out. It's it's a neat site. It's it's similar to uh, the TRS data one that we gave before, but this one's uh, you, you you put in an address and it'll give you uh, the latitude and longitude. Um, it'll take you to Google Earth. Okay. And uh, and it's for anywhere in the world, basically. Wow. So you can measure distance with it. It's a free site. It's a neat little utility. Um, check it out, itouchmap.com. So the Topo Map uh, app for the iPhone, itouchmap.com online uh, to help you create maps. That is going to be my tip of the week. So, Duran, I know you got to run here. Uh, what do you got for me? Tip of the week. Well, you know what? I, I just was looking at my desk. And what on earth could I tell you guys that would be that would be worth anything? And I just figured out, you know what? If you've got an iPhone or a cell phone and it breaks or it cracks, it's a bummer. So there's a, there's a company called Square Trade. SquareTrade.com. You can remember them from eBay Mark a long time ago. I remember Square Trade, sure. So now they have these protection plans for phones for 99 bucks. Basically, anything other than a, a stolen or lost phone, they will replace the phone for you. And uh, and I we funny enough, we just had something happen the other day with Lauren's phone, and it was awesome. Like they, it's like, I think you get the phone like a day or two. So it's probably like the best warranty for any cell phone out there. So if you do, if you're working on your phone and if you're in the middle of somewhere and you, you drop it or you run it over or it falls off the car and shatters the screen, you send it in and you get a new phone. Nice. So it wasn't what, not really pertaining to what we're talking about today, but I just was thinking, gosh, what can I give that would have any value? I'm not even sure that has much value to you guys, but <laughs> well, what's going on with land hub? You want to, you want to plug land hub before we go? No, we're just just working on it. We're still working away. So uh, we're we're into the into the YouTube creation phase or video creation. We're doing video creation right now. So working on that intently. So all right. Uh, other than that, that's uh, that's it. All right, great, great. Well, Duran, thanks so much for uh, hopping on this week. Listen, if you want to learn more tips, tricks, techniques, how to make an incredible income buying and selling raw land. Go to www.thelandgeek.com. Download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the free ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And of course, get this podcast delivered each week, delivered to your inbox. And look, if you want to buy some wholesale land, give Duran some love. Go to reserveland.com. And if he doesn't have anything you want, 
go to my site. Go to FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. And uh, you can also subscribe there to get incredible uh, wholesale land delivered each week to your inbox. So this is Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek with Duran Frazier. Thanks for uh, listening. We'll see you uh, next week. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.